So because this ego grasping is so primordial, at, at the level of the most profound assumption, and then even the consequences of it are so, so primordial, attachment, aversion, and all the other dramas, then it's hard to, of course, it's hard to see. Okay, so what was your question about? Depending on arising. Oh, did you think of it through over biscuits? <laughs> okay, what's the question? Here's the mic. Okay. Where are you going? J'ai, c'est un exemple simple. J'ai deux bonbons dans la main. I have uh, two bonbons. This is a performance, is it? Mm. This is a performance. <laughs> non, 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 uh, non, non. C'est pour l'histoire de la couleur. Uh, de quelle couleur est ce, ce bonbon? What color is this candy? Are you asking me? Yeah. Why? Uh, Pourquoi? Pour, pour vous poser la question que je comprends pas. To, to uh, get you to uh, uh, see what question is it that I don't understand, sir? Well, you asked me, the, okay, it's red, darling. We call it red. Agre- we rouge. agree in this, in our okay. world, it's called rouge. Et, 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 is, et, rouge. D'accord, okay. Je, j'ai deux bonbons. Tac. Ici, c'est... Darling, please, can you come to the point? I don't like all this. I'm happy to play okay. the game, ma, but ma, ma, then what's the ma, point? C'est, c'est ask the question. C'est, la question, c'est simple. C'est, well, ask uh, it. Um, um, l'environnement, uh, comment... Uh, J'ai, j'ai une vue erronée de, une vue erronée du bonbon puisqu'il est rouge what? quelque part et orange de l'autre. What? Uh, what? Okay, but they don't make it. You're making it complicated. Ah, okay. It's okay. I'm very. Excuse me, being rude. You're making it complicated. The, fir- the first thing you have to do before we even have a conversation. You know, I sit, sit down, please, or whatever. <laughs> She's nice, I like her. <laughs> Listen, honey, before we even discuss something, the first thing we have to do is establish the existence of it. So things exist conventionally, and what we're attempting to do is look into the ultimate existence of things. So before we even begin to discuss rouge, before we say what is this color, we have to establish the existence conventionally of a color called rouge. Or you know we have to we have to or a cup let's say. We have to name it and then define it. So, maman, qu'est-ce que c'est? Oh, c'est quoi ça? Okay. C'est quoi ça? Okay, what's qu'est-ce que c'est mean? Oh, the same. Why do you say it different and confuse me? <laughs> so, she'll say, darling, it's a cup. And I'll say, Mummy, what's a cup? And she will give me a definition. And usually a definition has two parts. The first will tell you its conventional characteristics. Well, well sweetheart, it's a clay, con- flat bottomed clay container, let's say. So, getting clear on those words, I will then recognize that. But I'm not happy yet because I don't know what it does. I don't know its job. I don't know its function. And this is, has, a ma- is, has massive importance when it comes to our investigating reality. So before we even begin, we have to establish this. But I must not believe Maman. She has to prove it to me. 
even conventionally. So she gets her tea and she will pour. And then I will see that it fits the definition, it holds my tea. That's the second part of the definition. I didn't say it. I forgot. What does it do? It holds my tea, darling. No, not yet. She doesn't do it yet. I missed. The second part of the definition is it. I say, what is it? What does it do? I forgot this. It holds my tea, darling. I don't have to believe her. She must prove it to me. You can't just make up something. You have to establish it. So she gets her tea and she pours. And I will see that it fits the definition. Still not enough. She has to now make sure she shows me that there is no other, or I have to check, that there is no other definition among ordinary world, the world we live in, that contradicts that. So having established conventionally the existence of a cup, and crucially, being in agreement about it, now we can begin to discuss. So the assumption here is, in my simple example, that we already know what red is. We already know what blue is. So when you say, oh, there's a red cup, we can establish immediately, conventionally, that you are wrong. Can you see my point now? All that's assumed, you see, you've got to do all that process first. Yeah. But you can't begin to discuss a cup with me until I'm in agreement with it. You know, if you keep saying, but it's, it's a cup, and I'll say, no, it's a toilet, we can never communicate. And this is 99% of our problem in daily life. I'll tell Nicola, I love you. And he'll say, Rubina, I love you. We think we're communicating. <laughs> But he writes his definition down. And his expectations. And I write down mine. We are in two different worlds. No wonder we argue. So if we had our definitions clear first, and our expectations, then we wouldn't fight. I would start to observe that he is not in agreement any longer with my, our definition of love, and I'll say, thanks, mate, bye, out of here. <laughs> But we all go mad instead. We all go mad instead, you know. We all go mad instead. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, that point is now clear. Thank you, darling. Good, okay. So any more questions about dependent? Oh, I'll continue talking. Okay, let's go. No, are there any more questions about what we discussed so far? We'll go into it slowly. Right. Yeah. Is there a question about dependent or rising? <laughs> Not. Related. What? It's related to it. <laughs> well, it is or it's not. So then let's see. <laughs> Who is it? Who's asking? Who's asking? Pascal Yeshe Dorji. Pascal. Mm -hmm. Or Yeshe Dorji. Which one does he want? Both. <laughs> Pascal Yeshe Dorji. Okay. What's he saying? I presume it's a he. Pascal's a he, isn't it? What's the question? Est-ce que vous pourriez expliquer la différence entre la méditation shamatha et la méditation vipassana? Could you explain the difference between shamatha and vipassana meditation? Well, it's not related. And it's not the question yet. I'll, I'll get into that. I will, I will promise I will get into that. It'll come. Definitely come. And it's crucial to understand. Yeah. I will understand. So what, say, say the two words he used again. Shamata and what? And Vipassana. Shamata and Vipassana. We'll discuss that later. Okay. Well, I mean, simply now, Vipassana is insight. 
meditation, and it's the method you used based on concentration to realize emptiness. So well, that's the answer, okay, but we'll go into it in more detail. Is meaning insight. That's the simple answer, then we'll go into it in detail. So the Tibetan word for tlaktong, Lama Yeshi says it's like, it's called kind of like extra seeing. He calls it that, extra seeing. Tlaktong. Yeah, so you see, you see the conventional, but on top you see ultimate. Just double check this, what he says. In this book, Mahamudra. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Lak means extra. He says Tong is see, maybe it's you know view or something. I don't know. Yeah. So we interpret extra to mean that you see the conventional truth, but when you reach a level of insight, you 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 see universe, you see uh, emptiness. What? In extra means you already see the conventional, and on top you then extra is the seeing emptiness, seeing the ultimate, seeing the ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, were there any other questions about dependent arising before we, yeah, before we continue going further, before we go further? How things exist conventionally. Meaning how the things exist interdependently. That the way we live our lives now. Not understanding karma, cause and effect. Meaning not understanding that there are causes from my own, that I have created the causes for the experience I've got. This is the first level. That alone, that itself is already the cause of so much suffering. Mm. That's the basic level of dependent arising. The deep, the, the, the most obvious first gross level of the problem of ego grasping. This ignorance. We're ignorant of cause and effect. Which means we believe the opposite. Yeah. There's no cause. It's random. It's good luck. Bad luck. Nothing to do with me. I'm innocent. It's not my fault. This is so primordial, isn't it? Yeah. So, of course, it happens. To, it, it, it comes with all the good things as well. That's what we call good luck. But we never agonize why. Why do good things happen to me? Why do good things happen to me? Who cares why? Just give me more, please. <laughs> That is how it happens. That is how we experience it. When a really extra good thing happens. Wow, I can't believe it. I'm so lucky. That proves that we don't know this, that I caused it. That it's the fruit of my past virtue. So we equally don't know why it happened, like we don't know why the bad thing happens. But we freak out about the bad things happening at the same time as saying, why is this happening to me? 
They're two separate thoughts. You know, why is this happening to me? Which implies I don't deserve it. And then when the good thing happens, wow, I can't believe it, I'm so lucky. It's exactly the same response. But the difference is, when the bad thing happens, aversion arises. When the good thing happens, attachment arises. But they're both the same logic, philosophically. Think about it. Mm. We don't know why they're happening. But one brings aversion, anger, which is why then we freak out. You know, and the other one just brings, oh, gra you know, t t quick, grab it, hold of it in case you lose it again. It's like so fortunate. Wow, aren't I lucky? Can't believe it. Look, wow. Like winning the lottery. It's like luck. In other words, if you, if you, you know, and you know, if you're growing a garden, you know, one day when you come out one day and the rose pops up, oh, I'm so lucky I've got a rose. Look at this. You don't say that. You know, it's the, you know the rose is coming. You go, oh, wow, isn't that wonderful? Look, because you know you did the work. Because we understand the cause and effect of botany. But we don't understand the cause and effect of karma. Mm. Buddha says this. That's why we freak out. That's why we grasp. That's why we get angry. If you understand karma, you don't grasp. You don't get angry. Well, eventually, you know, it's hard work. Like these young, I always quote these young, two young nuns. In 2003, Richard Gere invited a bunch, His Holiness to, the, to, the New York, to New York, and he invited a bunch of former prisoners, 20 former prisoners, all, all of whom had done some kind of meditation in prison. And then he'd also invited two young Tibetan nuns. So they were telling their story. They'd been imprisoned, tortured, sexually abused, a couple of years, you know, sad, tears coming, but no anger. Now, this is, we can't get this in our culture because we think anger is healthy and, of course, and normal. But anger is the philosophy of, ego, of, 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 of no cause, of something happening unfairly, of something being bad luck. Because listen to anger. How dare you do that to me? I don't deserve it, which means I didn't cause it. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? That's anger. And that's a normal part of our life. And we consider it healthy. But these nuns weren't angry. Because they, they all, they, they're not saying, why is this happening to us? They have a reason. It's called, ang it's called karma. Which they're using as their hypothesis for their explanation of their life. So they already have an answer to why. So they're not asking why is this happening. We're not saying how dare you do this to me. We don't deserve it. Because they have the view of karma. They know why they're suffering, and that informs their and that inform their that inform their capacity to deal with it, to deal with that suffering during their imprisonment, during their being tortured. And then one of them said quietly, 
And of course, we had we have we had compassion for our torturers. Because we knew we must have harmed them in the past. And because we know that they will suffer in the future because of this. So compassion in Buddhism, the way Buddha talks, is absolutely based on understanding karma. And we cannot have valid compassion until we understand karma. Because when you have karma, the wisdom wing, it's like you have compassion for yourself. Those young women were not sitting there being self-abusive. Oh, we deserve this. We must have created the karma. No. Not only that, but it increased their compassion. So this is the compassion wing. It's not enough. Compassion is compassion is not enough. Or it's not enough on its own because it's too limited. The way we have compassion, we only have compassion for innocent victims. A few children and some animals. It's about it. Very limited compassion. <laughs> and we only have compassion for the, for the grossest level of suffering. Those being harmed. But the Buddha's view of compassion is vast. It includes all sentient beings. All the happy ones. The rich ones. The famous ones. The, the ones who are being harmed. And the ones doing the harm. Because we're all in the same boat. All experiencing the fruits of our past karma. And due to the actions we do now, causing future suffering. So we can only have compassion for everybody. And that's completely based on the dependent arising of karma. And so until we've got that, which is in the wisdom wing, we can never have that compassion, that understanding of karma. Hmm. Takes time, of course it does. It's not how we think. Any questions? C'est euh, sur la vacuité et karma. Euh, si vacuité a pour sens production dépendante, et si karma est aussi dépend, est en dépendance de, de cause, peut-on dire que le karma est aussi vacuité If uh, uh, emptiness is also dependent arising, and if karma uh, also has causes, can we say that karma is emptiness C'est ça qu'il a dit no, no. What's the first part of his question? If emptiness has a meaning dependent arising. So what do you mean by that? When you say that, what do you mean? Qu'est-ce que tu dis quand tu dis vacuité a pour sens production dépendance? What do you mean by that? Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire? Hmm? Sorry? The cause. Uh, depending on causes. What is? Qu'est-ce qui dépend de cause? Eh ben, la plante a besoin d'eau, yeah, de, de terre, you mean de, no, what do you mean de soleil. No, 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 no. What do you mean literally by those words? Que tu what do dire? you mean when you say? Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire littéralement par ces mots quand tu dis vacuité a pour sens production dépendante? Yeah. Emptiness yeah. has a la, meaning. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire par la, ça? La vacuité de la plante. La vacuité de la plante, c'est qu'il y a plusieurs plant? éléments. Euh, elle peut pas pousser, elle est pas arrivée euh, Is that comme ça, plant par has hasard. Various elements and it cannot grow uh, randomly. Huh? Elle, est, elle est arrivée par les éléments, par le soleil, par le. So, par so what you're saying is, so what you're saying is the flower is empty of being. Okay, so then because the flower is empty, then. What's Donc, the conclusion? parce que la fleur est vide, quelle est la conclusion? Mm. 
pour moi, le karma, c'est aussi euh, une sorte de... Enfin, vacuité. Non, non, in your first time. Still your first time. De... Non, still still your toujours first time. toujours la, le, la première affirmation. Alors, il faut qu'on éclaircisse ce, ce pr première affirmation déjà. Alors, la plante. La plante. Non, 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 you non. said the words. Les, les mots qui sont là. Emptiness. Emptiness. What's he say? Has a meaning. Has the meaning arising. of dependent arising. Mm. What do you mean by that? Again, repeat. What do you mean by that statement? Vacuité a pour sens production dépendante. Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire par cette euh, affirmation? Oui. Il y a euh, euh, la vacuité pour moi, c'est quelque chose qui est euh, qui est euh, c'est tout un ensemble de, de, de choses, enfin, d'éléments, d'éléments qui font euh, qui font euh, un objet. Emptiness for me uh, is a whole set of elements that constitute an object. That's voilà. dependent on arising. Ça c'est la production dépendante. Yeah, voilà. that's dépendant on arising. Ça c'est la production dépendante. So what's the relationship between et, donc, what's the relationship between that And emptiness. Quelle est la relation entre ça et la vacuité bah, Rien n'existe réellement. Nothing exists really. Ok, good, good, that's fine. Oui, now, so Donc, good. Now we've established that. Donc, next, ma next next maintenant next qu'on a établi cela, la phrase suivante. Et, que, et si le karma est aussi en dépendance de cause, peut-on dire que le karma so, est aussi vacuité Ok, en anglais. And if karma is also independent of causes. Wait a minute, stop. What does that mean Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire que le, si le karma est aussi en dépendance de cause What does that mean Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire euh, Comme rien n'arrive au hasard et que euh, euh, rien n'est créé euh, par lui-même. Uh, uh, nothing uh, comes about randomly and nothing for sentient is beings, you mean? Because karma relates to sentient beings, right? Pour, you agree? Pour des êtres, hein? Tu, tu veux so, dire ça? Hein? So, so sentient beings' experiences pour, pour are the fruit of karma, yeah? Donc, des tu veux dire ouais. que les expériences sont le fruit du karma? Voilà, really? So, okay, ça? so say that ça. statement again. Karma, what? Donc, si le karma est aussi en dépendance de cause. What does he say? Et What does he say in English? If the karma is uh, also de dependent on causes, can we What say that karma is, is if ca No. If you say, what do you mean by if karma is dependent on causes? What do you mean by that? Qu'est-ce que tu veux dire par Karma is the fact that things exist in dependence upon le causes. Le karma, c'est le fait que les choses existent en dépendance de causes. Oui. You mean that? Ça, le karma. Is that what you mean? C'est ça que tu veux dire. Is that what you mean? Oui. C'est ça que tu okay, veux dire. Okay, so then conclusion. Donc Next conclusion. Piece? Peut-on dire que le karma est aussi vacuité Can What we say it? that karma is also emptiness Karma is not emptiness. Non, le karma, ce n'est pas la vacuité. Karma. La vacuité, ce n'est pas emptiness le karma. Is not dependent arising. La vacuité, ce n'est pas dependent la production arising dépendante. Technically is not emptiness. La production dépendante, but techniquement, n'est pas la vacuité. Are different ways of saying the same thing. Mais ce sont des manières différentes de dire la même chose. So the, right, so the correct way to say it is... Donc, la façon correcte de le dire... Karma... The law of cause and effect is an example of dependent arising. That things, because dependent arising, the way things exist conventionally, conventionally, there are different levels. And the one we're discussing mostly so far is it's things that my suffering comes into existence in dependence upon. Causes. So the law of cause and effect, the law of karma, is the first example of dependent arising. So that's the way to put it. And therefore, my suffering is empty of existing from its own side, which is what ego thinks. Because my suffering is dependent upon causes. So that's why each, each we have to analyze like that to be clear what we mean, you know? So are we communicating? Okay, good. What else? The same precision and clarity and depth of analysis you need just to make a cake. Do you mean a teaspoon or a half a teaspoon? We know that's important. You know, oh, you don't say, oh, I can put 15 eggs in if I want to. No, you can't. You won't get a cake. You'll get a mess. Same here. Every word counts. Every comma counts. Okay, the problem is, you can have your perfect recipe, but then you forget to make the cake. 
you're in trouble. So if you have perfect words about dependent arising, but forget to meditate, to get the realization, you're in trouble. So just because you've got to finally get it in meditation, just because you've got to finally get it in meditation, don't think you shouldn't be accurate intellectually. One of the biggest problems of spiritual teachings. Oh, I'm not intellectual. I want to meditate. That's like saying, oh, I don't want to have boring old recipes. I just want to make a cake. <laughs> No contradiction. No. Any other questions? Wait. Uh, so we've been watching our minds for three days now and. Uh, Good! <laughs> yeah, trying to. And I wonder if we, you could tell us about the different parts of our mind, for example, the part that is aware of things, the part that creates thoughts that disturb us most yeah, of the time. Yeah, that'll come. And we'll do that, but this is dependent on a rising talk today. No, actually, no, no, we, we, we'll use it as an example of dependent on rising. Good. Good. So we'll say, I am watching my breath. First obvious question is, which part of you is watching your special breath? This is, this is analysis of dependent arising. Well, I think, Rubina, it must be my mind. Okay, my mind is watching my breath. <laughs> Good. Which part of your mind? Now this is the question. This is the answer. And this is a big problem because we talk about I am watching my breath. I am meditating. And of course, as soon as we say that, we're trying to find the special little I in there that's doing the meditating. There isn't one. You don't need one. So let's do an analysis. This is the second level of dependent arising. That everything that, that the, in this case, the, the phenomenon we're discussing here is I. We could be discussing a cup or anything else. But here the discussion is a phenomenon called I. So can, remember conventionally, we first establish the existence of something before we start discussing it. So conventionally, what is an I? It's, 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 a, it's a synonym of person or self or me. They all used synonymously. So we can say that that, is, that fits the definition of microphone. That fits the definition of cup. This or that fits the definition of a phenomenon called self or person or being or I. So once we've established the existence of that phenomenon, now let's analyze it. In particular, in relation to the action called I am meditating. Okay, so then we, we break down the I into its component parts. This is the second level of dependent arising. The first one is that there's no I existing from its own side as an innocent victim because it's the product of causes. And you won't find any I among any of those causes. That's karma, okay? Powerful already. Now we go to the subtler level. 
but not the subtlest. This is already very tasty. That I, cup, toilet, whatever, rouge, which we've established conventionally to exist, exists in dependence upon its bits and pieces, its parts. This is a huge one. So, ah, oh, I'm meditating. Let's analyze that phenomenon called I, doing the action called meditating. Okay, so let's look at the parts of the eye. Well, Buddha, it's pretty simple. You know, this body and this mind. Okay, Buddha talks about the five aggregates. He divides us up into five little components. But let's keep it simple and just say this body and this mind. That'll do for now. Okay, so which part of the eye is meditating? Well, for Buddha, it's not your body. It's your mind. So we're narrowing it down. <laughs> Which part of I is meditating? Because remember, I is, is what we refer to as the, as, the, as the bits and pieces of body and bits and pieces of mind. I is the name we give to those bits, isn't it? Mm. So now let's use Buddha's view of the parts of the mind. And there are many, there are many that are all going to play a role in this action called I am meditating. Okay. So first of all, there's, um, there's just, we'll just mention a few parts. Well, first there has to be ear consciousness so you can hear the instructions. Yeah. So you don't, so tactile consciousness won't play a role. And eye consciousness won't play a role. And nose consciousness won't play a role. And nor taste. So just ear consciousness, first hearing the instructions. Now that's finished. Now we've got mental consciousness. So what part of our mental, con we're getting really close to it now, what part of our mental consciousness is meditating? Well, there has to be, there has to be, there has to be the first, the first one has to be intention. The thought. I will meditate. And then it's going to be watching every... It's going to be doing a little job every second. Then there's a part called attention. That part will be observing, let's say, the thing called the breath. Well, that's actually... That's tactile. Maybe breath is tactile. But that's not doing the meditating. That's just the object, okay? So it's, it's um, attention. Then after intention, you home in and attention, the piece called attention, Attention now pays attention to... It's true, tactile does work. It's, it's the object, isn't it? The sensation here. That's physical, isn't it? So tactile does play a role. Not in meditating, but in the object of the meditation. Okay? Okay. Okay. But it's not direct... It's not meditating. It's the, it happens to be the, the sensation here is the object of your focus, isn't it? That's all. That's all. That's physical. But it's not playing a role in meditating. Because mental consciousness meditates. Mental consciousness meditates. Sensory consciousness does not meditate. Okay, so now within mental consciousness... You got intention. I will meditate. I will watch my breath. Then you have attention. It homes in. And then that does the watching of the sensation. But another part plays a massive role. Another part before that even, discrimination. Has to identify that sensation. And then you have to have mindfulness. Mindfulness. What dumb word do you use in French? What word? What's it mean in English? What a load of rubbish. Who said, who made that up? 
No, I'm serious. Who made that up? Do you say, oh, I have to pay full consciousness when I make the eggs, when I make the cake? Do you say it like that? Or is it religious only? Do you use it for ordinary life? Do you? I'm asking you. Well, it's a load of nonsense. You people, no wonder you don't have... This is shock. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. It merely means not forgetting what you're doing. Thieves need it. Dogs need it. A dog uses plan consciousness. I don't think so. God almighty, I'm shocked. Do you hear? I'm serious. Stop saying it. It's called, call it not forgetfulness. That's what it is. That's what it is. So use that from now on. When you're speaking about me anyway. <laughs> Say what you like for someone else you translate. I can't believe you people. This fantasy nonsense. This is probably made up in the 1960s by some idiot. <laughs> As if I know anything. I act like I'm God, don't I? <laughs> Okay, not forgetfulness is totally important. Because attachment comes in and starts wandering off thinking about cakes, you know. So you've got to be applying not forgetfulness all the time. Now, another one that even helps that one is called vigilance or alertness. Thank you. Which His Holiness calls like a policeman. That's watching mindfulness, helping, alert, helping attention, pay attention to the sensation of the breath. So there's many other of these, these neutral states of mind that we have to train in meditation to do the job. Good. So we've mentioned quite a few bits. Would you agree? So now the question to you. What role is left over in this job of watching the breath? What role is left over in this job of the mind watching the breath that the other bits aren't doing for the precious little part called I? It's feeling all left out. There's no job for the little eye. So what job is left over for the self? What's your answer? Just to disappear. What? What? Who? What? what? You're assuming there is one. I need... That's not the answer. I'm t asking you the question. You just said in the beginning we say, oh, I am watching my breath. So we, we broke this I into its parts, and the parts that are mainly playing the role are mental consciousness. Discrimination, intention, attention, mindfulness, alertness, and many others, all playing their role. So what role is left for I? That is the question. So what's the answer? Any answers, please? Any suggestions? None. Any suggestions? Wait. Microphone, s'il vous plaît. You see. Micro, micro, micro. No work for the eye. Yeah, but there's an assumption there is one. Say it in another way, please. What role is there for the eye that we all believe exists? That we all believe exists? 
What role? Just answer. Quel rôle? Simplement répond. Keep it simple, honey. Just answer. Répète, please. What? Répète. Well, darling, if you're not even remember the question, just give the microphone to someone else and think about it. <laughs> give it away. Uh, Are there uh, any suggestions? And I'll repeat that. OK, this is the point now. This is forcing us to see this in a different way. You know, we keep hearing Buddha say, there's no I, there's no I, there's no I. We go, yeah, yeah, OK, there's no I, all right. So we're taking it. So we're taking it from a different perspective here. We're looking at the bits that do play a role in the action called "I'm watching the breath." So we believe when we say "I'm watching the breath." We believe there's a little part. Along with intention, attention, discrimination, alertness, mindfulness, and all the rest. That's working with the bits and pieces. That's the boss piece. We all believe that. That's the boss. It's the one running the show. It's the one that attends. It's the one that intends. It's the one that pays attention. It's the one that discriminates. We, all, we think that. Buddha says, don't be silly. The bits do fine on their own. They don't need a boss. That's the same philosophical position as a creator. We don't need a boss to run the show and punish and reward and to keep us in line. Sentient beings do fine on their own. So the pieces of our mind do fine on their own. There's no boss running the show, doing the watching, doing the intending, doing the paying attention, doing the discriminating, doing the mindfulness. That's what we have to get to hear properly. Okay. Any questions from that or suggestions of the, the role that this I will have that we think exists there? So the key point, we, got to, we have to go after lunch. We'll do this after lunch. There's no time now. Is to understand the use of the word independent. We don't realise, but what Buddha is saying is, in this particular framework, we believe that there is a piece called I that's independent, separate from the other bits. That's one of the analyses we have to do to prove how there can't be, to prove how there can't be. That's a hand down there, but it's lunchtime. What is the question, darling? Question. Micro. Just one before for lunch. Euh, moi, j'ai un problème avec la traduction du mot mindfulness. Pour moi, c'est présent, c'est pas mémoire. Ou non oubli. So, uh, 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 I don't agree with the translation of the word mindfulness. Which for, is it? The French one? The, yes. Which for, one? The, the she, she, yes. Go, what she, do you think she, she, she thinks uh, it should be translated as presence and not as memory or not forgetful, forgetfulness. Well, Buddha doesn't agree with you. Where did you get that le, from? Le Buddha n'est pas d'accord avec toi. D'où tu tires ce, cette, Where did you get that from? Cette, uh, traduction? You made it up or you've Et got some source? C'est toi qui l'as inventé ou tu as une source? I'm using Buddha's teachings as a source. Moi, j'utilise les enseignements bouddhistes comme source. De, quelle est la tienne? What's presence mean? Qu'est-ce qu que ça veut dire présence? I mean, it's, it's, you see, Buddha's talking about the a, mind has many bits and pieces. So a, what's the bit a, called presence do? Donc, l'esprit a, a beaucoup de morceaux et de pièces. Donc, qu'est-ce qu que cette partie qu'on appellerait présence, qu'est-ce qu'elle fait? Make it a verb. Et, et, et donne-moi un verbe. Être. Être what? To be. 
Oh, come on, you're being so cosmic. You're a little zen practitioner, it seems like. Sorry? She seems like a zen practitioner. Tu es si cosmique. Tu sonnes comme une pratiquante zen. Honey, what you're saying is profound. Ma chérie, ce que tu dis est profond. But that's way at the end. Mais c'est vraiment loin à la fin. C'est le résultat de tout ce dur travail. When you're enlightened, you will definitely be it. Et <laughs> You'll definitely be present. It's the end result. Sounds delicious. Yeah. C'est ma motivation. This is my motivation. Well done, mine too. Bien, oui, c'est aussi ma motivation. <laughs> Let's have lunch. Très, et ah. allons déjeuner. Comme so, je, oui. quoi? Comme je ne suis pas encore éveillée, j'ai beaucoup de oui mais et il y a dix minutes, on traduisait euh, mindfulness par euh, pleine conscience. Et, et, ça, et, et ça a été traduit par euh, mémoire non oubli. Et, et, et voilà, je posais la question si. Uh, I, I'm not an item yet. I have a lot of yes, but and uh, ten minutes ago, we uh, well, mindfulness was translated as uh, pleine conscience, and then we said uh, non forgetfulness. Or, According to Buddhist uh, psychology, selon la the ability to not forget what you're doing is what mindfulness refers to. So it's a very hard thing to learn to do because we're forgetting all the time. So mindfulness is the ability to bring your mind back to the object. So you don't forget what you're doing. Don't make it religious. That's the problem. Bring it on the earth. He, as Lama Zopa says, thieves need mindfulness. Snipers need mindfulness. It's not a holy thing. It's something practical you need when you're doing cooking or walking or anything. Et euh, les, les bandits aussi, on a besoin, on a besoin pour euh, faire de la cuisine, on a besoin, et donc c'est pas quelque chose de religieux. The ability to forget, not forget what you're doing, or intention, or attention, discrimination, alertness, concentration, they're simply names referring to the third, so the components in the third category of the components of our mental consciousness. There are some parts of our mind that are neurotic and eye-based and delusional. The second category are the virtuous states of mind, like compassion and love. And the third category are these that are neither virtuous nor non-virtuous. I like to refer to them as the mechanics of the mind. So whether you're a psychopath or a, or a snake or a dog or a meditator, you need those third lot. You need, the neutral, you need them all to do whatever you're going to do. There is nothing holy about mindfulness. There's nothing holy about intention, attention, vigilance, concentration. Every sentient being has them all the time. We have, but we, when we meditate, they are then we, what we have to train to help us practice virtue, to help us be and become present when we're finally a Buddha. Are we communicating? All I'm trying to do is express Buddha's teachings here. I'm trying not to make up anything. That would be very rude of me. I mean, Buddha doesn't own the word mindfulness. People can make up what they think it means. At all, everybody can do what they like. And people in the West have. It's practically it's his own religion by now. But don't call it Buddhism. Don't insult Buddha. People think I'm being very... Somebody... 
I didn't say half of what I'm saying now, but I just even said, I even just quoted Lama Zopa one time at one teaching in California that the, uh, even thieves need mindfulness. And some fellow got so upset he left and wrote and said I was insulting Vipassana meditation. Aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui. That means today. I didn't mention today. Oh, about what I'm saying. At this particular event in California, I said about 1% of what I'm saying today. In a particular event in California, when I was discussing my meditation, I said about 1% of what I'm saying today. And then I quoted Lama Zopa, saying thieves need mindfulness. And a person at the, at the course left very upset and emailed later and said I was insulting Vipassana meditation and that I was so aggressive people should be protected from me by the way, extra <laughs> okay okay, that's enough, have lunch so th think of lunch as having no inherent nature. It's made of parts, peas and carrots, and bread and butter, bits and pieces, and they're made of parts, and those bits are made of parts. You won't find any inherent lunch. A projection of our mind. And you won't find an eye that's eating lunch. And you won't find any eating, act, action of eating. There's no subject, there's no action, there's no, there's no result. They're all empty. They're all empty. Because they're all dependent arising. So on the basis of this, enjoy lunch. And enjoyment is also empty. And enjoyment is also empty. So do your, breast, do your best without squeezing your brains too much. Okay. As Lama Yeshi says, squeeze your brain. So without squeezing your brain too much, please enjoy your lunch. And then discussion time, you discuss this topic. And don't just rave on. Just try and be precise as you can. In attempt to understand it. And then we'll go into more details after. Okay. Jung Trub Sem Chog Rumpo Che, Ma Ke Panam Ke Guchi, Ke Panyampa Me Pa Yang Go Ne Go Nu Po Bo Shog. That'll do.